Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video, so we're going to do a little verification for the spring 2020 forecast for today's uh, first video. Uh, we'll see how we did with the forecast, and uh, we'll go through the data at the UK Met in terms of temperature and precipitation anomalies through this spring. And then, as I say, we'll see how we did with the Gaza of spring forecast. Uh, coming up later on today, of course, we'll have a regular week 10-day video break with all of the usual features. So, uh, back at the end of February, uh, we were, I think it's the last day of the month, wasn't it? We released the uh, Gaza of spring 2020 uh, forecast. And um, it was quite a tricky forecast because we had a very, very wet uh, autumn and winter. Uh, and it did appear that that wet weather was going to carry on into March as well. It did certainly through the first half of March. Um, it was still quite unsettled then. But what we actually said with spring forecast was that we were expecting uh, a much drier season. We thought it would be quite anticyclonic uh, overall. And there will be a transition away from that very wet and windy weather that we'd have through the winter. And was we was expected to continue to be early part of the spring. We thought that as the spring progressed, we would get a we would get a progression to higher pressure and warmer and drier conditions. So we went for above average temperatures. We thought around a degree above the 81 to 2010 average and near normal rainfall uh, with uh, wetter and uh, drier spells are setting one level. We thought the early part of spring could probably be quite wet and then there'll be a, a transition high pressure but one thing I was a little bit unsure about was how quickly that transition would happen uh you know uh, so so the early part of the forecast actually the trickiest part we was pretty confident that as we went along we would see higher pressure getting involved more involved but we wasn't sure how quickly that would happen how quickly the transition from low pressure to high pressure would uh, take place uh, so this is uh, how the uh, temperature anomaly comes out for the spring of 2020, set against the 81 2020, av 2020 average. It was a warmer than average spring widely across the country, particularly so for England and Wales, where we have a temperature anomaly of up to two degrees above average. Northern parts of the country around one to uh, one and a half degrees above average. So, so it was a very mild, very warm spring uh, across most parts of the country. Probably a little bit more than we anticipated, but uh, at least we was on the right side of the train. So we said a warm and average spring. We did get warm and average spring. Precipitation-wise, it was a very, very dry spring. Uh, look at that. So our precipitation forecast, our rainfall forecast, uh, was, was wetter than it actually came out as. Uh, and it was a very, very significantly drier than average spring, with some eastern parts of the country having 30% uh, of their average uh, rainfall. Uh, and the only place that has average rainfall, just gets to average, is the far northwest of Scotland. Most places having a very, very dry spring. Now, the reason that happened, let's go back to the temperature anomalies, see what the temperature anomalies did month by month. So uh, this is March's temperature anomaly. You see how it's only a little bit above average against 81 to 2010, just a little bit just a little bit but april much warmer uh and then of course we got may as well coming out uh, warmer too so that's how the that's how the spring came out warmer than average but uh, we did also say for march that uh, we thought yes it will probably be a bit above average but not greatly so compared to uh what had happened in january and february that came off too uh so uh just zoom into this very quickly this is uh the ct for uh for march and uh you can see that with this um we have uh, we have january ct at 6.4 february C ct at 6.3 but a uh, march at only 6.7 so it was a little bit above average for the march ct but but uh, it's actually quite close to january and february that's something else that we picked out uh, correctly for the spring forecast that i'm quite uh, pleased about that uh, that there wasn't a particularly big deviation from uh, january and february to march ct but anyway coming back to uh, to the um uk wide uh, data so so march March's overall temperature was just a little bit above average when it gets warmer through uh, April and through May. And this is how rainfall uh, came out through uh, through this uh, spring on a month-by-month -month basis. So this is how March's rainfall looks. Again, it is driving average, particularly for more east now, but not excessively so. 
Uh, it really is in April, uh, but it goes very substantially dry, but average away from southern, uh, central southern England anyway. And, uh, and then look at that, uh, Mark, uh, uh, May, just absolutely phenomenally dry, particularly for England and Wales, where some places have no measurable rainfall throughout the entire uh, month. So you can see that that, pr that progression did take place. Obviously, uh, obviously uh, March is a more unsettled month, really, although still I'm a dry outside for recess, but it's more unsettled uh, in March compared to uh, April, which goes drier, and then to May, which goes even drier uh, still, away from the far northwest of Scotland uh, anyway. So I think overall we did quite well uh, with the spring forecast. I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, we got all the trends correct, I think. All that happened is that... Uh, is that, is that the transition to dry weather happened a little bit quicker than we expected. We did expect that transition to dry weather to, to go on through the spring, and that it would be, you know, quite a warm anticyclonic, high pressure dominated spring overall. But, but the early part of it was perhaps not quite as unsettled as we anticipated. Nevertheless, I'm quite pleased with Gazweather's spring forecast um, this time. So uh, when we get it right, it's, it's always nice to, uh, to be able to say that you've, uh, you've had a decent... Uh, season and I think this time we have done quite well with this. We have picked out most of the general trends in terms of temperature uh, and uh, certainly the progression. It was drier than we expected, I'll explain. But I think overall we've done quite well. We picked out the the progression through the spring uh, to drier conditions after an unsettled start. We said it'd be warm than average. It was warm than average, maybe a little bit more than we thought, but we was on the right side of the trend with that. Uh, it was a little bit, uh, was significantly drier than we thought. Um, uh, but uh, but again, I think we was on the right lines with, with forecasts anyway. We went against, crucially for this to be correct, we went against the analogues, uh, which said that May was likely to be quite a cool and wet month. And uh, and I was looking through the data, and it just didn't feel right that, that that would be correct. So I did actually go against what the analogues were saying. And I said that I thought May was likely to be a warmer and drier month, really, than, uh, than the analogues in particular were indicating. And that indeed was the case. In fact, it was a phenomenally dry and pretty warm month as well. So overall, I'm quite pleased with how the spring forecast uh, came out. I think it's performed quite well. Uh, we've got most of the general trends correct. It was right to go against the analogues uh, for May. And, uh, and yeah, I'm quite, quite pleased with how this one uh, went. So, so it doesn't happen all that often, but nine times out of ten, the long-range forecasts, <coughs> excuse me, the long-range forecasts tend to go uh, a little bit awry. Um, and uh, we hadn't had a very good one for the winter or for the autumn before that, actually. So, so uh, I'm quite pleased that uh, at last we've had a decent forecast uh, for the spring. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did you think that the spring forecast came out okay? What did you think to this spring? I think we'll remember this spring for a very, very long time, how, given how warm, dry, sunny uh, it was. I think we'll remember it for a very, very long time. And uh, I dare say it will probably end up forming a historic weather video or part of a historic weather video uh, at some point because uh, all of those days of hot, dry weather, especially during that amazing May, um, I think that'll stick in the memory for quite some time. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Did you think the spring forecast was uh, OK? Uh, and uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so uh, thank you so much for, uh, for watching this video. Uh, and of course, we're uh, into the summer now, so we'll be verifying the summer forecast um, at the beginning of September. And at the moment, I don't know if the summer forecast is very, it was a very challenging forecast, very, uh, very bold forecast, uh, really. And uh, I don't know whether summer forecast is going to perform quite as well as the spring forecast, but uh, we shall see. It's still very early days with the summer, of course, and now autumn updates have begun as well. So uh, we never stop at Gaz where this long range bandwagon keeps on rolling. And uh, yeah, we're uh, beginning our autumn updates as well. NAO forecast of the winter 2020-21 coming up on Sunday too. So we never stop at Gaz Weathers. We always keep the content coming. Okay, that's it. Let me know what you think to the spring forecast in the comments. We'll be back later on in the week. 10-day video update uh, very shortly. But uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.